Alright, again with the abrupt ending. I'll try and stop that from happening. Anyway, good day to you and welcome back to Diablo. Die, Skeletor. Anyway, in this part we're hopefully going to finish level one, and I think from now on... More rags. Are these better? Yes, they are slightly better. But in this part, what I'm going to try to do is finish off level one of the labyrinth, and then after I do that, I'm going to go over leveling up. It's pretty self-explanatory, to be honest. And... ow. And I'm going to go over a couple of things that I kind of missed going over in the last couple parts. And I suppose if we have time, we can talk to some folks in the town about the butcher and see what they have to say. But right now, I mean, we've really not got much more to do than clear out this area and um, maybe pick up some things that I missed that dropped. One nice thing that the second game adds is that it adds a button that you can push that highlights everything that's on the ground. And I think the expansion to Diablo 1, Hellfire, I think that adds a spell that does the same thing. But, obviously, I'm just going to heal right now with that. Obviously, we are not playing the expansion. We are playing the original game, which is the game that I grew up with. And I'm not going to worry about the fact that my rags are about broken, because rags are always almost broken. I'm also not going to worry about that short bow, just because I've already got one. Did I level up again? Wow, I did. Okay, well, we're, we're going to be going more in... Bleh! We're going to be going more in depth into leveling up than I thought. Alright, well, that's fine. The nice thing about leveling up is that you can really do it whenever you want. It's not like Knights of the Old Republic where you have to time it strategically so that you'll uh, get your health back because whenever you level up, it's instant. You will get all of your health and mana back. Alright, I think now is a good time to level up, actually. Alright, it's very, very basic. What you've got, you've got strength, magic, dexterity, and vitality. Strength, obviously, is... It affects the amount of damage you can do. It affects what kind of what what kind of melee weapons and armor and stuff like that you can use. So we're gonna want a little bit of that because we're gonna want to be using some armor. Cause oh, speaking of which, my rags broke. <laughs> um, dexterity is about your two hit. I think. Let's see, I'll put one thing. Yeah. Dexterity alters your two hit, vitality alters your life, and magic alters your magic. Now I'm gonna want to up my two hit. Oh, also it affects your armor class. Um, I'm gonna want to up my dexterity a little bit, and I'm definitely gonna want vitality. Um, magic I'll deal with a little more later, but right now I'm more concerned about life. All of the um, skills, that's one of the major things about playing as different classes, is that all of them have certain number caps. Like, um, the sorcerer can go up to ridiculous numbers in... Um, I cannot carry God, I'm anymore. getting a lot of magical items. Can I make room for this? No, I'm going to drop one of these short bows. So I've got magic rags that I need to have Kane identify, and I've also got a magic club that needs to be identified. Either that or I could find a scroll of identify. But anyway, what I was as I was saying, um, for example, the sorcerer has a much higher cap on magic, obviously. I think it can go up to like 230. We won't be getting that high up, but that's just because I'm going to be playing through normal difficulty and not nightmare and hell difficulties, which are unlocked for each individual character after you've played through the difficulty proceeding. If I ever LP Diablo 2, I might. I cannot carry any more. Okay, this is getting a bit ridiculous. I think I'm gonna have go up to town 
and have things identified. I will cut ahead to when I get there. Alright, back in town now. And as I was saying, there are, um... What we've got here are some magic items, which often have nice qualities. Um, in this game there are actually like a couple of things, like the Club of Worthlessness or something like that. But anyway, blue items are regular magic items which will have modifiers on them that make them, that give them special properties, and the modifiers are randomized. There are also yellow and gold ones, and I can't off the top of my head tell you what the difference between yellow and gold ones are, but they're, um... I think, like, yellow is a unique item and gold is, like, a mega unique questy item or something like that. Something like you would get from a quest. Um, but those are unique items that are slightly more powerful than the regular magical items. Anyway, what we do when we have identif unidentified stuff and we don't have any identify item scrolls is that we talk to Kane. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. That's his famous line. All right, let's see what we've got. The Rags of Thorns. Attacker takes one to three damage. That's pretty good. I'll use that. The Brass Club of Disease. Okay, that would sell for more if I didn't identify it, but I didn't think to save before identifying. And we've got an okay bow that I will hold on to. But I don't need it right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in the town. Because when you leave things in the town, in Diablo 2 it'll disappear, but not in this game, which is kind of nice. Um, also, I want to keep those with me, and I will sell... Whoa! What can I do for you? This junk. Which I won't even get any money back for it before. That just kind of sucks. Because now I don't even have enough gold for a potion. I, I wanted one potion of healing. Eh. Anyway, back to where I was in the labyrinth. Again, I will cut ahead so that you don't have to suffer through all this tedious walking and me not having anything to say. Oh, one thing before I go. Um... For those of you who are wondering about the scheduling for this LP, I forgot to mention this in the first two parts. Um, basically, it's going to be just sort of every once in a while I will update this. It will get updated fairly frequently, but um, I'm thinking every two or three days, because I want to make sure I can keep Half-Life on about once a day. I, I, I might miss a day here and there, but the general goal for Half-Life right now is one per day, and I figure if I put Diablo parts on top of that every other day or every three days or so, that'll be a good manageable rate. Because with the new 15 minute time limit, I feel like uploading 30 minutes of video per day as a maximum, that's still a little, that still gets to be a little much. Grab this short bow just for the hell of it, until I get something better. And right now, you know, it just makes sense for me to use all of my uh, staff charges. In fact, I am going to start using my staff of Firebolt right now, because it's got a ton of charges. And there's really no reason not to use them, you know, they're low-level staffs. I will be replacing them eventually. And in this game, you don't... You don't gain points or experience from grinding your skills. Like, that's not a Diablo trait, that's a JRPG trait. And this... I'm not exactly sure if you would call this an RPG. I guess you, you could if you really wanted to. Yeah, it's kind of an RPG, but it's not really a traditional one, obviously. Alright, I didn't actually have to end up cutting ahead there, which is kind of nice. It looks like we're just about done. Like I've said, you really want to clear out... Big, empty, useless room. You really want to clear out all that you can, just for experience sake, and for, for the drops. Because you want to get all of the drops you can. I mean, it is possible to hack into the game and get, like, ridiculous loot. But, you know, that's just cheap, and I'm not going to do shit like that. That's just dumb. This is 
Diablo as it was originally intended to be played. Which is another reason why I'm not gonna play the expansion. I might play it some other time, but for one thing, I'm not familiar, all that familiar with it. And for another thing, it's made by Sierra and not Blizzard, and Sierra changed a lot of random things about the game and didn't implement certain things well, and Hellfire just was kind of a hit-or-miss sort of expansion, whereas the original game is just awesome in all respects. And like a lot of the higher level stuff you don't even really ever run into. Like, the higher level spells that were supposedly added, like I almost never find even. It's odd. Maybe they only come up in higher difficulties or something. But it feels like the same game for the most part, except with stuff taken away. I don't know. It's just not great. That was the sound of a trap that I did not manage to avoid. So as you can see, even for a sorcerer, the game's pretty easy just to plow through at the very beginning, but trust me, it gets much harder. Unless you're a rogue, in which case you can stand in doorways and just sort of shoot through the doorway at a fairly constant rate. Which gets kind of cheap, but you know, it's an old game, what can I say? I'm not making any excuses, I just love this game for what it is. A fun, a very fun, very simple hack and slash. That's really the best way to describe what this game is. And here, we've got a library room which was full of skeletons, which I did not expect. Help. Oh, I've got a healing staff. I'm gonna use that. There we go. That worked. Alright, we've got a library room. We don't actually have any library uh, bookshelves, but what library rooms are, do is um, there will be these little skeleton tomes in the middle, and sometimes you'll also have bookshelves. Um, skeleton tomes will usually be scrolls, but if you get lucky, a few of them might drop a book. And right now we got a scroll of healing and a scroll of identify. Pretty tiny library room, but a library room nonetheless. And what scrolls do, there are a couple of spells that are in, that can be found in scroll form, like healing, identify. I'll go over all the spells later, um, once I get them all. But what a book does is that it actually adds something to your spell book. And Adria the Witch sells both scrolls and books. Unfortunately, I don't have nearly enough money to go and check her inventory before I go down to the next level, because... One thing that this game does is that it randomizes everything once you go down to a new level. Like, when I went down to this level, this entire level was randomized. Which means you've got a different game going every single time you play the game. And, um, but what it also means is that the stuff that the merchants have in their stock is also randomized every time you go down a level. So what I often do... Actually, I think some merchant stock might be re-randomized every time you reload a game. So you can kind of be cheap sometimes when you're looking for a certain book from Adria. But anyway, um, just gonna run back into town. Do I need anything identified? I do not. So let's just sell Whoa, some stuff. What can I do for you? Yeah, I don't need any of this. But yeah, the randomizing in this game is great. I really kind of wish more games did stuff like that. And really, you know, that's all I have to say for now. Um, next time, we will get started on the Butcher Quest. We will actually get started on our first quest, which takes place in level 2 of the dungeon. But until then, this has been KBM Vengeful as always, and I hope you are continuing to enjoy this, what I hope is a very informative, at the same time as being entertaining, let's play of the first Diablo game. I'll see you later. This has been KBM Vengeful as always. I think I already said that. God damn it. So long. <laughs>